everyone. How are we doing today? All right. Thank you for coming out. I really do appreciate it. And so today, I want to discuss with you a little bit about negotiating like a woman. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and start off. Joy. So this is my story, her story instead of history, right? Um, so originally, I did engineering um, at UVA, uh, psychologist, I would say. That's just a master's at this point and then an entrepreneur. And that is the beginning of why I decided to go into understanding how I should negotiate. Can we go to the next slide? So as a youth, I really, really wanted to be a doctor. I thought that I was gonna cure the whole world. I wanted to create an artificial pancreas and um, you know, cure diabetes and make sure that nobody ever had it. And that was my goal until I realized how much school it really was and how hard it was. So things changed a little bit. So as I went through to college, I realized that engineering still had some opportunities for me to stay within the STEM discipline. So STEM, as everyone knows, science, technology, engineering, and math. And so it's something that there are not a lot of women in. And so studying engineering gave me a little bit of insight into the male world and how that dynamic played out. Moving on to my corporate world career, I started to come out of school and realized that I wasn't getting paid the same as my colleagues. And it wasn't quite fair to me. I didn't think that it was fair. Um, I thought, hey, you know, I did all this engineering stuff. I'm supposed to have more money than people who are in arts and sciences. It's not fair. Um, anyways, <laughs> so I found that out the hard way. And then there started to be a light bulb going off in my brain, which made me realize that I needed to have a little bit more understanding about my worth and how to negotiate. Moving forward as an entrepreneur, having an app and a tech startup, it was even harder because not only did I have to pitch myself to angel investors and start selling myself, selling my ideas, I even had to take it to VCs at a certain point. And that was very difficult to prove my worth in negotiation style to them as well because they're sharks. So uh, it just was an awakening for me throughout my life to understand that I need to take a stand and understand something about negotiating. Also, as a part of that, I decided to become a negotiator for the American Association of University Women so I can help facilitate negotiation, negotiating skills for women um, across, I would say, California rather than the world. <laughs> Next slide. Okay, so the note, moving forward, we're going to talk about why it's important. So the gap, right? We have this huge gap that is about 20% as far as the pay gap, even now, as of 2016, the gap is huge. Here we have a little bit of the calculations. I'm not going to bore you guys with the math. I just want you to see a little bit of what I'm talking about. We have the pay gap here. So we have the men's median earnings, women's median earnings. And we see that men are about um, 51%, I mean 51K, I'm sorry, and women are at 41,000. And I think that it is really important to notice that there's about a $10,000 range and we see that earnings ratio also varies a lot by race um, and ethnicity so we see that we have latinas here at 55 percent and then we also have african-american women at around 62 percent then we have island pacific i'm sorry pacific islanders at 60 percent and then we also have american indians around 58 percent so things are looking um, a lot uh, different from the white male to the um, female dynamic. So when you take into account everything, you take into account the fact that you're STEM or, or that mostly men like to do science, right? And we say, oh, you know, they're all mathematicians. They all like to do engineering. So of course, they're going to make more money. You know, women like to go into liberal arts. Um, but that doesn't account for everything, and it, doesn't count, and it doesn't account for all the variables as well. So even if you take into all the things you could possibly think of, there's still 7% of that salary gap that is not explained. And so what does that mean? Oh. So with that said, there are some perceived traits that are about women. In addition to the fact that there are some um, un, you know, bi unknown bias and some intentional bias as well, Women are not negotiating. They're negotiating at a rate of 55%, um, percent, and men are negotiating at a rate of 70%. So it is really, really a far discrepancy, a far cry from what it should be 
and we should be stepping out on, on faith. But what I wanted to say is that there is, um, if we can go back one slide. So these are some of the traits that I wanted to discuss that women do have um, that or that are, are consistently associated with women. We have perceived submission. So women are known or perceived to be specifically humble or submissive in the way that they carry themselves. We also have understanding that women are, tend to be understanding, tend to be empathetic. We also have the fact that women are nitpicky, right? Some of the things that people see when they are hiring women in, in the workplace, and this is the things that they pick up and they think that applies to all women across the board. We have emotionally inconsistent, which is my favorite. People think that women are emotionally inconsistent. They do not know how to handle themselves when they're in high pressure situations. They don't know what to do, and that's why you can't put them in positions of power. So the, we go to the next slide. So perceived submission. There is an article, Gender Stereotypes in Negotiation, Performance and Examination of Theory and Research, and that was by Cray in 2001. And this was done on prisoners, and this was specifically done to see the difference in behavior between um, stereotypical, stereo stereotypical negotiation skills for men and women. So they had some men who would be compromising and then they had men who were not compromising. And obviously you would say that the compromising individuals were able to come out on the uh, higher end of the spectrum for negotiating as far as prison goes. So that is something that is learned from that study. Next slide. Understanding. So who asks and who receives in salary negotiating? And that's by Marx. And that's based on empathy and collaboration, another female a set of female traits that are associated. And basically, you find out that collaborative um, negotiations and competing negotiations are both types of negotiations that work. So you can do the competing, which is ego-based, which is all about you know, word for word, verbatim, um, you know, tit for tat, and that is typically a male style of negotiation, and then collaborative is working together um, to come to a conclusion. And you find that they had five different types of, of negotiating skills, and you find that these two came out on the top. So, and you, they both resulted in a $5,000 pay increase. So you can be collaborative, and you can also be cutthroat, depends on whatever you choose to do. Next slide. So nitpicky, right? I like to call it detail-oriented. <laughs> so with that, you can pick up on people's behavior, their signals, what they're doing. There's mimicry and there's mirroring. So when you see what people are doing, you can mimic their body movements. There's nonverbal communication, and you can give that back to them. You can give them a smile back. You can nod your head when they nod their head, and that helps them to understand that you are on the same level uh, playing field as them. So this is a, another article, Digital Chameleons, Automatic Assimilation of Nonverbal Gestures in Immersive Virtual Environments, and that's by Bailinson in 2005. And then Emotionally Inconsistent. So this, like I said, was my favorite because it is essentially do something crazy. Um, what it is is that when you're in the room with someone while you're negotiating, it is best to, if this is the last case scenario, I'm not recommending anyone to do, any, do this, but last case scenario, um, if, if you're negotiating, you can pr uh, throw out a behavior that they wouldn't expect. And that kind of changes the dynamic and the shift of the conversation because they are no longer in power. They have no idea where this conversation is going. And in the specific article that I was reading, which was the advantage of being unpredictable, how emotional inconsistency extracts concessions in negotiation, and that's Sinister uh, et al. 2013, it, they concede over anger. So when the, when the behavior shifts dramatically, they choose to not be angry, they choose to go with the flow. And in some cases, it's called expressed sadness, is, is what they discussed in the specific article, you can, they feel pity and they actually do tend to concede. So uh, this specific article, it's kind of okay to show a little bit of sadness. I don't know if crying is, is uh, important enough to do, because um, it may carry on into the job if you get it. But um, I think that you know, expressed sadness is something that you could actually throw in there. So I think that those things combined are very important to keep in mind. Next slide. So the ask is the last. And so what next? So the first thing I want to say 
to all of the women in here is you need to negotiate. That's the first step to it. You need to even try. Uh, we need to step out and say something. And uh, regardless, if they are offering you the position they are interested, and we need to, um, or, or offering you the money, in my case, they're interested. And so what you need to do is use that power and, and control it and manage your dynamic in that conversation. The steps are, <laughs> I'm sorry, and the steps are empathize. They are to communicate, compromise, emulate. And I said, in this case, you can even act a little bit crazy. So that is, that's the last, the last step. Um, and then as, like I said, as Marilyn mentioned in her past, this is a man's world, but I don't mind being in it as long as I am a woman. So.